So one of the main things we had to do this past year and a half during this pandemic while my daughter was in virtual first grade was to keep my son busy. Now, one of the main things he did and continues to do is draw. Now, draw what? Well, draw anything he has heard. Uh, draw anything that he can see. Draw anything that he can think of. Just draw, draw, draw. Well, eventually, after a year and a half and a lot of contribution from his, from his older sister, we were left with stacks and stacks of paper. So we came up with a plan and a solution. So like many corporations around the world, we, are, we wanted to start digitizing everything so we can eventually recycle uh, all these pieces of paper as well. So how do we do this? Well, buy a scanner and just scan away. This is a review of the Epson ES200. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And today we're looking at the Epson ES200 scanner. Now the last time I bought a scanner was probably my sophomore year in college, and which was a little while ago. But anyway, back then digital photography was almost non-existent and not many people actually owned a scanner back then. Back then my needs were different and the scanners were different back then too. Now I, the one I had was a flatbed scanner and it was super slow. Now today there are all kinds of scanners, including the flatbed ones, but the technology has really advanced and including the speeds as well. Because I was tasked in scanning a lot of sheets of paper, and I mean a lot of sheets of paper, I had three requirements in buying a scanner. First, it had to be able to feed in multiple sheets of paper. Second, it had to be a duplex scanner, meaning it had to be able to scan both sides at the same time. And third, it had to be relatively inexpensive, something under $300. The Epson ES200 pretty much fulfills all those requirements. So here are the key features of the Epson ES200. First, it's a 20 page auto document feeder, meaning I could load up to 20 pages and I'll automatically scan all of those in one session. So before with the flatbed scanner, I had to just put one document in at a time. And there are documents or scanners today that can that are both an auto document feeder and a flatbed scanner, but those are a little bit more expensive. And second, it's a duplex scanner, which means I can scan both sides at the same time, including all those 20 pages that I feed in there. It's very portable and can run off either AC or USB power, but I would recommend plugging it into the AC power, and I'll just kind of demonstrate that later on. And then bo it's both compatible with PC and Macs. And at the time of this recording, you can get it for about $200. So here's the Epson ES200 unit itself. Uh, it's right now it's folded up in this compact design. You have the USB cable back here, then you have the AC power back here. And the way to open it is you just flip it up by pulling that tab. You have the document feeder helper here. So you can pull those up. And then you have the alignment for the sheets of paper. So you can do any kind of sheets of paper there. There is this function for cards. I haven't figured out how to get that to work. And then there's uh, three different buttons here. I'm ex not exactly sure what everything does, but this is uh, automatic uh, scanning button here. And I'll get into the software in a moment. Now to put in a comparison with, let's say here are my AirPods. This is regular non-pro version. This is my iPhone 12 also a non-pro version, but you can kind of get an idea of the size of this. And then we bring out a, uh, a letter sized sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11. And so you can see how it goes and you just feed in the documents here. And as you feed them in, this turns solid blue and you can just start scanning. Now, if you have the right software installed and I'll get into that in a moment, you can just hit that button, it'll automatically scan and it'll open up the program. So let's get into the software right now. So there are two main pieces of software that are installed. You have the Scan Smart software that I'm showing here, and then you have the Scan2 software. And I think that this is more of a companion software here to interact with the other softwares like the Scan2 software and maybe some OCR software that, that is behind the scenes. But here, this companion software really just 
you can do something like if I click scan double sided, it'll scan whatever in the feeder tray right away or scan single sided the same way. But let's go into the settings here and you'll see you'll be able to customize what kind of things come in through the settings or how how the quality of the settings are. So here's your DPI here. You can change it there, but also you can change different things like the brightness, contrast, gamma. And if you scanned using other third-party software such as Image Capture that's built into the Max or Photoshop, they'll have their own types of settings here based on that software. So this is really the Epson uh, interface here or the Epson settings that they have here. And I found this pretty useful. I, I was able to dial back different things like I reduced the gamma from two to one. So that gave me a better picture here. Okay, so coming back to the main settings page, there are the customized actions. This is after things are scanned. Uh, the most important one is probably the save. That saves it to the disk. But you can save it directly to Word and it actually uses the OCR, optical character recognition, and it makes it into, you know, makes it into a Word doc. Then you have, you can go right to a print dialog if you wanted to. And they have some built-in software this is like some trial software to manage your invoices and receipts. And then you can customize different things like the file names, uh, the different settings within the PDF, JPEG, or TIFF. And there are other settings that you can customize here. So I'm going to go through kind of a demo of this thing in action. And I won't go it through it too much because it's just really a scanner. And you know, you've seen, you've probably seen this many times, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate the speed of the scanner. I have this set at the highest DPI 1200. And so it's going to go a little bit slower and then we'll compare that to what I normally have it at 300 DPI, but I am going to press use it by pressing this button. There is a listener software that's installed by default and that that'll uh, interact with this button right here. Now, if you don't have the listener installed, then you have to go through the software on the computer, but I'll, I'll go through the listener software uh, in later on in my pros and cons here. But uh, right now it's blinking. I think it's on, it's like sleep. I'm gonna kind of wake it up and I'm gonna hit the button. It launches the software on my computer and now it's scanning the papers from the back to the front. And as you can see, it's going pretty slow, but again, this is 1200 DPI, which is pretty much overkill for most scans. Uh, you really don't need this quality. And normally I set it at 300 DPI and you're gonna really see a difference here. Okay, now we're back with it set at 300 DPI and it was going so slow that I didn't even finished the last uh, paper or show you the recording of the last paper but you're gonna see this going really fast now. So I'm gonna hit it again, loading up the software. And now it's done. And I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side of how fast that was. Scanning the papers from the back to the front. So one of the things I mentioned that is you can run this on USB powered alone, but I would definitely recommend plugging it in. And so let me give you a little demonstration. I have it plugged in with the AC power and the USB, of course. So I'm gonna hit, go ahead and start scanning these pieces of paper again, and go ahead and start scanning. Software's starting to run. So it goes pretty fast, right? But now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this guy from the AC power here in the back. And now you can still see that the light is still turned on because right now it's running off the USB power. So I'm going to go ahead and load these guys again. Now, remember, this is at 300 DPI and not at 1200 DPI. And I'm going to go ahead and scan these right now. So we're going to run this scanner again. And you're going to see how slow that goes. That's probably even slower than the 1200 DPI. And imagine doing the 1200 DPI only on USB powered. It's gonna be very slow, right? Now, I still think it's pretty awesome that you still have this option of just having this as a very portable scanner, but it is, it is something to know about the performance, how slow that is, right? So 
Uh, so yeah, I would recommend plugging this in when you can as far as AC power is concerned. And that way it'll speed up your workflow tremendously. And then one last quick demo. This is the type of things I have been scanning. These half sheets of paper. And I have like 13 sheets of paper in here. Remember this does up to 20. And you'll see how fast this has been going. So. And I just want to quickly show you the files that we did scan. These first six files are the ones at 1200 DPI. And you can see the file difference, uh, file size difference. This was at 18.1 mega, megabytes. And then this equivalent one here that I scanned at 300 DPI is at 1.2 megabytes. So if you're scanning a lot of documents, you definitely don't want to do 1200 DPI. So taking a quick look at the resolution that the 1200 DPI scanned at, you can see it's at 10,000 by 13,000 uh, pixels. So that's a huge file there. So if we compare the one that we did at 300 DPI, it's at 2,500 by 3,300 pixels. So much, much smaller, much more manageable size. Okay, so I'm showing you my desktop here because I wanted to kind of give you one of my annoyances as far as the software is concerned. And it has to do with the listener software. So there's this icon up here that represents the listener software for the scanner. And if I click on it, it shows that my scanner is plugged in. And basically this listener software allows you to use that one push button. So that's kind of nice. So if I disconnect my scanner right now, it's gonna say the scanner is disconnected. And when I, when I plug it back in, now it shows you that it's connected. And it allows me to do that one touch scan, right? But the annoying thing about it is I can't exit out of this. And a lot of times, and I'm, I'm one that just wants to have the most minimal amount of resources running on my computer, even though my M1 Mac can pretty much handle anything. Uh, I, I just kind of want that choice. And so there's no way to exit this actually. And if I go into activity monitor, when I delete this, uh, action or force quit this it just comes pops right back up and I did, did some searching and the only way to get rid of it is with two lines in a terminal command and then you have to restart the computer so that's a little bit of an annoyance so this has been a quick review of the Epson ES200 now other uses that I'm gonna have for this is not not only for my kids drawings but for all kinds of scanning so basically paired this with my shredder I'm gonna be able to scan a lot more sensitive documents, but also at the same time, get rid of a lot of clutter. Uh, I'll be able to scan some more old photos that I do have. The only thing that it can't really scan is bulkier items. So things from books, so other things that you can't just take out and lay it flat. And also it can't just do very wide items. It can do very long items, long and narrow items, but it can't do very wide items. So that's something to consider. Now, would I recommend this? For sure. Now, if you're someone who doesn't use a scanner every day, but uses it once in a while, or just uses it in batches, I would definitely recommend this. You can fold it away very well. If you need to scan things on the go, like have it with you, it can run off the USB power, but it does scan a little bit slower. But anyway, it's very versatile that way. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.